Hello, hello. Welcome to another video podcast. I'm Mike Matthews from Legion Athletics, and this is going to be about microwaving food. Specifically, I'm going to answer some of the more common questions I get about microwaves and microwaving food, like, is the radiation produced by a microwave dangerous? Does it make your food radioactive or less nutritious? Does it leach chemicals from the containers that you microwave the food in and so forth? And fortunately, there is a fair amount of research available on the topic and the current weight of the evidence is that microwaving your food is not dangerous. Microwaves are not dangerous. And in fact, in some cases, it's actually a better way to cook some foods because it helps retain more of their nutrients. That said, if you want to play it safe, so to speak, then you want to microwave your food in glass or ceramic containers because chemicals can leach from plastic containers into your food. Before we get to that though, let's do a little myth debunking. Let's start with the claim that microwaves release harmful radiation that makes your food radioactive. And the first problem here is the word radiation because yes, microwaves do produce radiation and that is how they cook your food. And most people associate radiation with A-bombs, Chernobyl, burning, painful death, cancer, and so forth. What they don't know though is that radiation really is a broad term that refers to anything on the electromagnetic spectrum and just about everything around us emits some level of radiation including the lights above our heads, the ground beneath our feet, and of course the screen that you're watching right now. Now the key here is understanding that radiation waves have two distinct characteristics. They have sizes and they have frequencies. So the size would be the measure of the wave from peak to peak, and the frequency would be the amount of cycles that occur per second. So on one end of the spectrum, you have large low frequency radiation like radio waves, and those are not harmful to our bodies, at least for the most part. And then on the other end of the spectrum, you have much smaller, much more high frequency waves like x-rays, for example. And when you go to the extreme, you have gamma rays. Now those can be very harmful to the body. Now you may have also heard of the terms ionizing and non-ionizing radiation. And so what that is, is non-ionizing radiation is radiation that doesn't damage atoms, it just excites them. It makes them wiggle around faster, whereas ionizing radiation actually damages atoms. And so the larger, lower frequency wavelengths are non-ionizing, and the smaller, higher frequency ones are ionizing. Now, microwaves are on the electromagnetic spectrum. The radiation used by the microwave oven is using a larger, lower frequency wavelength. In terms of exactly where on the spectrum, it's actually you have the largest, lowest frequency wavelengths or radio waves, and then next are microwaves. And for example, you have to go a couple rungs further in terms of smaller size, higher frequency to get to the visible light that we see around us. Now, as I just mentioned, non-ionizing radiation, which is the type of radiation emitted or produced by a microwave, a microwave oven, it doesn't damage atoms, it doesn't damage molecules, it excites them, it makes them move faster. And so how a microwave oven actually works is, it's designed to trap the radiation waves in the little box because the further they travel, the weaker they become. That's why cell towers are not cooking our food for us. And then the water in our food absorbs these radiation waves and heats up. And that's why, for example, if you microwave glass, it doesn't heat up. You see most molecules are not affected by the radiation produced by the microwave oven, but water is. And so it works great for heating up food and beverages. Now, because a microwave oven does not produce ionizing radiation, it cannot make your food radioactive because that is what is necessary for anything to be radioactive. It needs to be emitting ionizing radiation. Now, you might be wondering about radiation leaking out of the microwave. And if that is happening, is it bad for you? 
Well, one, no, it's not happening, assuming you have a well-built functioning microwave because they come with metal shielding to prevent that, to keep the radiation in the oven. And that's not very hard to do because the radiation wavelength is quite large. It's about five inches wide. And two, it probably wouldn't be all that harmful even if it were happening because the radiation waves would be so dispersed. Okay, let's tackle another myth, which is that microwaving your food kills the nutrients in it or drastically reduces its nutritional value. Now, this one's ironic because research shows that while microwaving can slightly reduce the nutritional content of certain foods, it's actually one of the best ways for preserving the nutritional value of many other foods. Now, the reason for that is all forms of cooking reduce its nutritional value somewhat because you're either heating it up and evaporating some of the water and that takes nutrients with it, or you are boiling it and inevitably some of the nutrients are going to leach out of the food and into the water. So if you boil vegetables, for example, that'd be a bit weird in, in some cases, but there are some vegetables that maybe you would boil that is going to reduce the nutritional value more than let's say steaming or microwaving because microwaves cook food quickly. So the less time the food is cooking, the less time there is for nutrients to leach out. And it doesn't result in very much food or food water evaporation. So the bottom line here is microwaving your food does not reduce its nutritional value much more than traditional forms of cooking. And in some cases actually results in more nutritious food. Okay, another myth here is that microwaving food in plastic containers turns it into a toxic soup of chemicals, makes it poisonous. Now, this one is not entirely wrong because there are toxic chemicals in plastics. The two most common types that you've probably heard of are bisphenols, like bisphenol A or BPA and phthalates. And these chemicals mimic estrogen in the body, which is why a number of observational studies have associated them with various problems like weight gain, infertility, cancer, and other dysfunctions and diseases. And so it is smart to limit your exposure to these chemicals. And research does show that heating up food or beverages in plastics does result in some of these chemicals leaching from the container into the food or beverage. And also the more you use an individual container or maybe a cup if you are boiling water for oatmeal or tea or whatever, the more chemicals are released over time. That said, according to current safety guidelines, the amounts are very small. I mean, you'd have to eat a hundred to a thousand times the amount that is present in food after being microwaved in a plastic container to reach levels that are currently understood to cause problems. That said, more and more research is being done on these chemicals and they may indeed be more harmful than current safety guidelines would indicate. And we can be exposed to these chemicals in many different ways. So while it could be true that the amount of these chemicals contained in the food that you just microwaved is too low to matter by itself, if you are being exposed to the same types of chemicals in many other ways, they are adding to that total exposure, which can cause problems over time. So personally, I do think it's smart to take simple steps to limit our exposure to these types of chemicals. And as far as microwaving food goes, that means microwaving in glass or ceramic containers. If you do that, you don't have to worry about it. And if you want to learn more about these chemicals and how they may or may not be impacting your body and what you can do to minimize your exposure to them, check out the podcast episode number 166 that I recorded with Anthony J. It's all about all of that. Okay, the next myth is that microwaving kills your food. And of course, this is just kind of riding the coattails of the radiation fears because as far as most people are concerned, radiation just kills things, right? And the truth here is most of the foods that we are eating are completely dead by the time they are going into our mouths. The plant foods that we eat start dying the minute they are harvested and the cells, the cells in the animal products that we eat, whether it's meat or milk or whatever, 
start dying soon after the animal dies and frozen foods are dead long before they reach our plates. And that's okay because how dead or alive food is doesn't have much of an impact on how healthful it is to eat. In the end, so long as we can get the nutrients that we need from the food, it's totally fine if it has been dying for two months uh, before reaching our mouths. And how we cook it doesn't change that. It doesn't make it worse. It doesn't completely kill the food and kill all the nutrients. It just doesn't work like that. And while it's true that some nutrients in food do degrade sooner and faster than others, for example, antioxidants in, let's say, fruits and vegetables tend to go faster than other nutrients, but that is true regardless of how we cook the foods. And furthermore, it's not a big deal because we can get all the antioxidants we need by eating reasonable amounts of dead slash dying nutritious foods. We don't need a home garden where we pick the vegetables and eat them on the same day to get enough antioxidants. So the bottom line here is decades of research and basic physics tells us that microwaving your food is not dangerous. It is not going to harm your health. It is not going to harm your food. It is safe. It's convenient. And if you want to make it maximally safe, then microwave in glass or ceramic containers. And if you want your food to taste better, and if you want to get better at cooking or maybe even learn to enjoy cooking, which then of course results in even better and better food because the better you get in the kitchen, the better your meals turn out. And of course, that's not the case with the microwave. Then yeah, cook traditionally. Use the oven, use the stove. But if you are in a pinch or you didn't have time to meal prep or maybe the meal that you brought to work or the meal that you want to make for the week and bring to work, maybe for your lunches needs to be heated up, but you don't have a proper kitchen set up to heat it up in a, in a pot. Or if you want to incorporate microwaving into just traditional cooking to speed things up, don't feel bad about it. It's totally fine. Alrighty, well, that's it for this video. I hope you liked it. If you did, please do give it a like and drop a comment down below telling me what you thought and feel free to share any other thoughts on microwaves and microwaving that maybe I didn't touch on. And if you also want to check out any of the research that I mentioned in this video, just, uh, just look in the description. And of course, if you want to do me a big favor and get notified when my next video goes live, click the big red subscribe button over there and click the bell next to it and YouTube will or should notify you when I post the next video. And I hope to see you then.